Hey folks, welcome to another episode of The Security Table. My name's Chris Romeo, joined by Matt Coles and Izar Tarandosh. <laughs> We're not doing the wave, apparently. Which I thought only happened inside of large <laughs> sports stadiums, but apparently it happens in podcasts now too. It's a new thing that, uh, that we're pushing the envelope on, just like everything else. So the topic of the day is the CISA Secure by Design Pledge. And so I have to set this up a little bit because I was out at RSA a couple of weeks ago and uh, CISA had a little, little ceremony and I didn't get a chance to attend it, but I did hear about it where they had a, a number of big name companies come in and sign this Secure by Design pledge. And while that sounds, oh, so moving industry forwardy, <laughs> I don't think it actually was. I think it was just a whole bunch of performance art and theater. What? No. And didn't really move the needle forward. Because just to throw to just to throw the grenade into the into the room here, like the companies that signed this for the most part have been focusing on software security for 10 and 20 years. So my premise is they are going to do nothing different as a result of signing this pledge. There's going to be no they're not going to go back and start a new subgroup or, you know, create a new team that's going to focus on this. They're just going to keep doing what they've been doing. It's, but that ends the intro it's, because it's, Ezar is ready, already. To, he's ready to jump in. All right, Ed, Ezar. I just want to say that after looking at the pledge, and we're going to go into detail on in this, but take into consideration what you just said and the items of the pledge. Well, that's exactly what are people doing up to now. <laughs> like if this is new to anyone <laughs> uh i saw oh, a concept on God. pledge it was this mifa it was mifa mifa so what is that like that i want to i want to try to extend my oh maybe it was the letters m f a that's what it was <laughs> so, ooh, ooh, oh ooh. i need i want to oh. that one so i think i could maybe i could i could have some people extend our utilization of it as a gigantic company uh, which that ship is it's already sailed that 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 ship is across the ocean like who doesn't have mfa capability right now in the things that they're building like if you don't have that i got a question whether i would even use your solution if you told me if i said hey i just saw your new SaaS product and i want to sign up but i don't see mfa so what wait, wait, wait but, okay i'm out for people who are not familiar with the pledge itself. Okay. But let, let's just walk them through it. So these companies came and signed this, this thing in a ceremony. I am really bothered that there were no capes, goblets, invocations. You can't call it the real ceremony if you don't have one of those. Mm -hmm. No, no, no goats, no nothing. So yeah, terribly misnamed. But what they said was that we are going to strive for these aims in the next year or so. Now, drive you with a positive. One thing that's in the pledge that I really, really like is that they are asked to succeed in these tasks and then tell everybody what they did. But in case they don't succeed in those tasks, they are also asked to come and tell everybody what they did. And that, I think, is like sort of a first in an in a official framework to come and say, hey, come and tell us how you failed because everybody There's... can learn from that. There's no teeth in this thing, though. It's, it's oh, no, 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 sure. Voluntary. It's everything completely voluntary. Everything's voluntary. But, and, and, you know, it, it, I, th and I, I had a similar thought, but then I started to study what they actually wrote here in the kind of subtext below the goal statement. And, and so let's start with the first one in the pledge here. Multi-factor authentication. I was kidding. I actually knew what it was. <laughs> MFA. With, here's what the goal says. Within one year of signing the pledge, demonstrate actions taken to measurably increase the use of multi-factor authentication across the manufacturer's products. That sounds really, really good. Like that sounds like a positive move. What the heck does measurably increase mean? It doesn't mean anything. I can, I can measurably increase by one. That's I measured 
and I increased by one. So I added MFA to one more thing. So my point is, it doesn't. One when, is when better you start than none. To, it, one is better than none. But when you start to unpack this, does this really move the industry forward? I don't see how this makes the world drastically a better place. So wait, so, I, I would say that I agree with you, but I think that the, the fact that this exists, the fact that there is a first out there, the fact that there is something to start from by itself is a good thing. Yeah. So let's, let's keep, so first off, I, I agree with you, Chris, in part that, and I guess I, guess I agree, but there's are too, uh, that the the goal here is to is to reduce the use of passwords and and move towards multi-factor authentication to re, to reduce the chances of phishing and credential stuffing and other attacks from being successful if one if one critical system or or well-used product or or you know thing from a vendor gets that additional level of protection that's a net positive does it move the needle a little bit it's just just a little bit right uh, on the grand scheme of things, and it's a start. And and if every manufacturer who is as a sig signatory to this pledge moves one of their applic just one of their applications for or products forward, then that's a that's a good thing. Now, uh, I, I one might an astute reader might take a look at the uh, list of people who signed, and some of those are not product vendors; they're service providers, for instance. Uh, and so what are they really going to implement from an MFA standpoint? Are they talking about the, the things that they deploy or are they talking about the things that they don't build? So maybe the goal needs a little bit of work in that regard, but if you move the needle, if you move the needle a fraction of a degree, it's still a fraction of a degree in the right direction. Yeah, but it's, it's, people are going to think that this is such a bigger thing. People are going to interpret this that aren't cynics like me are going if, to. If it was, if it was going to be interpreted as a bigger thing, there would be more signatories to it. Imagine if there were goats in the ceremony. <laughs> well, that would have been something to see, but the point is, and someone else brought the, I'm, I'm going to share another point that, that I was talking about this with somebody else. And this, this was uh, the point that they brought into the conversation was these aren't the people that really need the pledge. The right. people that need the pledge are not on the list here. You've got to get this pledge to them. They're the ones. There are people who don't use MFA as a base security feature for users inside of their platform. They're not on this list. No, they're because not. No, no, they no, don't no. know about it. No, no, wait, 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 wait. It's clear that the intention here is a, is a, a monkey see, monkey secure thing, right? T-shirt idea. Right. Monkey see, monkey secure. They <laughs> did Send send your heat mail to T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Many monkeys were harmed in the making of this podcast. Anyway, so fine. These are like big names that everybody recognizes, and and I think that the importance here is that CISA has had a lot of things coming in in the last year, and this is sort of I don't want to say combination, but this is sort of like a material step that they are taking into, hey, we are taking these people here and we are giving it some measure of accountability, right? So at, at the end of the day, I think that they are building a momentum towards some measure, I said. There's, there's, no, there's no accountability in this. There's no accountability. There's self-accountability in here. Self-accountability is not accountability. Self-accountability, like, there is no, they don't, the, the people that sign this never have to come back again. And there's no consequences. They don't have to, but a year from now, if we can, if one of them got spot because of a default password, and we come back and say, but you sign the CISA pledge. <laughs> First, that would be extremely horrible to do because everybody can get poked by all numbers of things and sometimes not under the control. But for them, it would be like, you know, it would be an egg in the face. So, so there, let, there is so a you're... small, teeny measure of Sorry, man. So, so let's, so let's just, sorry, let's, let's indicate that Izar just called out the second of the pledge goals, which is around oh, yeah. default passwords. Okay. Within one year of signing the pledge, demonstrate measurable progress towards reducing default passwords across the manufacturer's products. But the, you see, that goes back to what I said in the beginning. How come you're not doing this already? Why do you need a pledge <laughs> and, and to do this? What is measurable progress? 
Yesterday I had two Listen, default passwords. Today I have one default password. I'm an old ah. school requirements person. And most of the time I was on the other side of the equation trying to twist the requirement based on the words that were put into it to make mm -hmm. it fit whatever I actually was doing already. But when I see something like this, demonstrate measurable progress, you have to define what that means. So this Is item it? seeks to reduce the percent of exploitable default passwords in the wild in order to drive down attacks. Okay, so what is, is measurable the, progress? Is it 0.0001%? Is it 99%? What's measurable? One is, better, one is better than zero. They're, they're all they're measurable, just, but they're, they're all, just, both numbers are measurable progress. They're just talking about the capability of measuring something. They're not specifying results or thresholds. Right. And, and more importantly, it's actually, water, water and more importantly, it ideally, it's a, net, it's a net change to the positive. So, so here's... Here's what I wrote about. Here's what I here's what I want to see in this in in pledge v two. Okay, so let's let's use another. I like it was reduced. The next one, reducing entire class of vulnerabilities. I'll make my point here. Yeah, did this one? Oh my god! My, so where here we go. So I'll read it just so, for those that are listening on audio or at the gym or at the beach or wherever you are. And if Within you're at the gym, year, you've already fallen off the treadmill multiple times. Yeah, <laughs> in Australia. Here it is: reducing entire class of vulnerability. Within one year of signing the pledge, demonstrate actions taken towards enabling a significant, not just measurable, a significant measurable reduction in the prevalence of one or more vulnerability classes across the manufacturer's product. Here's my idea: you state the one that you're gonna that you're gonna measurably drop, and you pay ten thousand dollars to charity for every. Exploit every vulnerability that hits a CVE that's that's known if known you can make a CVSS score above six or something. You pay ten grand to charity for each one in the next year that comes out. Now we got some teeth. Great. Now we got some teeth on this thing, and now it's fun to watch. I'll make a dashboard, <laughs> and people can follow along and watch how the money's yeah. flowing because that would be fun. That'd be awesome. See, so it's accountability. Reach out to Chris first. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> somebody build the dashboard. It'll be great. So what like, you're saying is to what you're saying is the game game. Do gamification on this pledge Let's as a means. By the pledge, that's my new website. Hold Get people accountable in a, in a material way, you know, in, in a way that we, somebody feels it. But hey, but the problem is, a great thing. no lawyer in any of these companies would sign off on that deal that I just described. Let's for a second talk about the pledge of reducing entire classes of vulnerability. Okay. Of all the seven ones in here. I think that that for me is the one that most approaches what I understand as secure by design. Oh, absolutely. The others, the others well, are and, security patches, vulnerability and we'll, disclosure be, policy. Before, yeah, before you jump ahead to the rest, let, I mean, actually, now that you have, not all of these are secure by design. You're absolutely right. Enabling MFA, having MFA is a design issue. Default passwords is a design issue. Reducing class of vulnerability in part a design issue, although, although not exclusively. And then the rest, the rest are not really design problems, right? I mean, they're design say... of a program. Well, they're design of a program or the design of, a, of your infrastructure or a design. You can relate it to design, but it is not strictly design of a system. Yeah, I, I would say that even the password and the MFA I could relate to design, but are not design issues. Right. Well, if you don't well, have MFA I mean, enabled, you yeah. have to at least design it into your product, right? So it is uh, it's potentially yeah. redesigned. Yeah, we we would MFA. not we would not agree if somebody put a product in front of us that only had username, password authentication, and said, "Is this secure by design?" We would say no, because MFA is part of the the corpus of just expected f functionality that that if you don't have it, you Fair enough. You're not there. And, and having so. hard coded and having hard coded credentials, the exact same thing, right? I mean, no, that, that's not by design. It's just done. But anyway, uh, secure by three out of seven, right? Because the rest so, are operational issues, right? So one of the one of the ones towards the bottom there is is issuing CVEs when you do vulnerability reports. It's a great idea. If you're not issuing CVEs, you're really behind the times. You should have been doing that since, you know, 2008 at, 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 at least, but, well, but the CVE it's not a design one, problem. The CVE one has actually more measurability to it because it says demonstrate transparency and reporting 
by including accurate CWE and CPE fields in every CVE record for the manufacturer's products. This we can measure. You could literally use NVD if they ever refund it or get it moving again but or whatever. You could, you could use that. To, you could actually measure that and say, okay, in 97% of your CVEs in 2025, you had accurate CW, you had CWE and CPE fields applied to it. Like that's, that's, that's actually more measurable. But l let me reel this in for a second. Just a quick question. They have separate uh, parts of the pledge, vulnerability disclosure policy and CVEs. Yes. Isn't emitting a CVE part of a responsible vulnerability disclosure policy? It doesn't have to be. It doesn't so, have so to be, but isn't more, more, more importantly, more importantly, so the goal, you, you're misre I think you're misrepresenting the vulnerability disclosure policy goal. Okay. And we're, and we're obviously we're skipping around here for a bit for fo folks who are trying to read, read, a, <laughs> read along at home. So the goal of vulnerability disclosure policy is within one year of signing the pledge, publish a vulnerability disclosure policy. So first off, uh, let's talk about measurability here. The measurability is, did you publish something that you didn't have previously? But, but really, shouldn't this be talking about implementing a vulnerability disclosure practice that functions, that works, that results in CDEs being generated so that you can meet the, in order to meet the next part of the goal, you have to be able to issue CVEs, which means you have to work with a CNA, right? A, a, na a naming authority for, for CVEs. You have to have information in your vulnerability disclosure practice, it's missing from the actual goal. True. Yeah, I, I see the distinction. Now. And actually, when you read, another thing popped up in my head. Uh, within one year of signing the pledge, publish a vulnerability disclosure policy that authorizes testing by members of the public on products offered by the manufacturer. Isn't what? there a lot of license? Yeah. Isn't there a lot of licenses out there that say in no way, shape or form, can you try to do something malicious to our product? Otherwise we're going to get your purse born and kill I the mean, gold and do all kinds of things. A decade oh, ago, that was a problem. I didn't read that. Holy moly. So they are talking about safe. So if you read further down on that, it's talking about safe harbor language. So this is the, this is the notion that we want to make that that companies should not make security research on their systems a punishable offense. Yeah. Whether that's that legal license or security no. research is not, is not universally accepted as an acceptable form of, of testing. Um, you, you know, it still runs afoul of many EULAs. But, and so, even pedesters need a get out of jail yeah. free card. But, but a vulnerability start. response, but a vulnerability response policy is not the place to put that, right? I mean, maybe if you're going to do a bug bounty, you might have that in a bug bounty in a bug bounty scope. But I don't, I don't know. And maybe this is something if we have uh, vulnerability or incident response teams out there who are listening and can provide some feedback on this, is this something you would actually put in a in a vulnerability disclosure policy? That doesn't sound right. Uh, you may put. You may put protections for, for safe reporting practices, meaning you'll keep, you know, the researcher confidential and you'll do coordinated disclosure. But I don't know that, that you would put in your vulnerability disclosure policy that it's okay to do security testing. That doesn't sound right. Yeah. Hmm. There's something fishy here. Do you Not think fishy, everybody knows? Miss Do you think everyone who signed this knows they, they, they must have caught that nuance? Wait, 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 wait. You mean That's that they actually read it before they signed? Just well, their lawyers read it. I you imagine their lawyers, lawyers yeah. Senate if their lawyers why would the lawyers if it's non-binding? I can find anything that's non-binding. No, a, it's I'm a pure, curious. It's a PR if... question. It's a PR question. If you, if you didn't, if you're, if you're saying on behalf of so-and-so, uh, so behalf of Microsoft or Google or HP or you know, the other signatories here, hey, we agree to this pledge and you didn't run it by your corporate attorneys. Oh, so yeah. then we agree that there is a measure of accountability here. Well, there's public accountability at the very least. <laughs> well, no, just in this, like to your to your earlier point, some I think it was Matt made the point about the EULAs that this may not be allowed inside of the EULA. And so I'm looking at this and going, could there be like something that people signed up for that's actually against their own EULA? Need yeah. any of those? Like that would be, that would be hilarious. 
possibly be hilarious. We're retracting our sign that we actually didn't sign. We put a fake name. We wrote Mickey Mouse on the pledge when we were at the ceremony, just in case. We, uh, or are they going to give you a million dollars because they found the one guy that read the EULA? <laughs> Tiny so, letters at so, the bottom. So now it's interesting. If you, so let's, let's touch upon this BD, BDP one a little bit more. Because if you read down further, there's a note. Note, due to the specific nature of this item, examples of achieving this goal are not included. What? Huh. <laughs> Huh. But there is a measure, though, there is an example of demonstrating progress. Actually, Chris, so, so to your point, there is, in each section, there is an example of demonstrating measurable progress. So they do indicate what might be considered as measurable progress. I read that as non-binding. It is non-binding. All of this is non-binding. That's part That's of the, the problem. That's the point, right? Is it's all non-binding. It's, it's the non-binding pledge. One more reason for the goal. Well, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a, just not, can't let a, the goats go. <laughs> well, all right. So also we probably should let people know about the history, right? So this, this came history on the heels of, goats? of something else. I don't know else. the history of goats. This came on the heels of something that CISA did with, with um, K through 12 education organizations around securing their environments. And I They're guess they're saying have, the pledge in schools now. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to to CISA. CISA. <laughs> um, yeah, so so there's it's modeled after after something that that came before with you know a pledge to K K through twelve education organizations to to improve the security of their environments, um, and it had some measure of of success, and so they took that approach and are using it here, and so it's all voluntary. But there is ways to describe what what progress means in each of the sections, and just to, so, so let's just flush out because we we skipped around a bit. Uh, security patching uh, within one year demonstrate act demonstrate actions to measurably increase the installation of security patches by customers. Now, uh, I, what, I have some thoughts on that one, but let me let me flesh out the rest of them just so we get to them. And the last one that we haven't talked about is evidence of intrusions within one year of signing the pledge demonstrate a measurable increase in the ability for customers to gather evidence of cybersecurity intrusions affecting the manufacturer's products. We have a lot to unpack in both of those. Yeah. So security patches. Yeah. How I'm, driving, I'm still driving customer behavior. By the evidence driving of customer intrusions. behavior. But I'm going to save it. So let's do patches first. Oh, yeah. So, so patches. Driving customers to install patches. So first off, it's outside, the, it's outside the control of the manufacturer. Wait, wait, where is that? Oh. Yeah, so, so increasing the installation of security patches by customers. You can by do that customer. in one of two ways. Really, one of two ways. You educate customers, like, like Google has done over the years, I think, with, with Chrome. You make it... You make it stupid easy to uh, to install the patches, and you make it very clear why you need to install the patches. I mean, I'm in favor or you of take just... it out, or you take it out of their hands and you do it automatically. Yes, just why are we well, even are... making this a user decision? Wait, 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 wait. To apply exactly. a security patch. Why don't we make the system so that they stop working if the patches are not in there? <laughs> okay, you're going too far now. The goats, <laughs> and now you want the system to just shut down when it should have been patched. <laughs> But let's 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 seriously walk this back for a second because I think Matt just pinpointed something that might might have might make this pledge actually have teeth. So why doesn't the pledge say within one year of signing the pledge, demonstrate actions to in, to automatically install security patches for customers? Ooh, the automatically is the problem. Yeah, the automatically is the problem. Let's use an example of an OT system. You know, well, say, you can't sign the pledge it. if you're an OT. What? Not my problem. I mean, that's the pledge. Like the pledge is, if we're going to be, if we're going to get serious and we're going to start pushing the envelope here, we can, if we water things down, it doesn't do anything except a bunch of nice photo ops at RSA and handshakes and people smiling and using a ceremonial pen and goats. And there's nothing that goes with it. Like it's, it's like, wait, but, wait, if, but, if, but if, you, what you I just, just find that I say, 
<laughs> no, no, this was one particular segment. Come on. But why not? Why not? Why it, isn't that a pledge, a goal you guys could get behind within? I'll say it again. Within, I've just made it up on the fly, but within one year of signing the pledge, demonstrate actions taken to automatically install security patches for customers. Apart from the fact that some systems, you cannot have it automatically. And in some business cases, you can't have it automatically because, hey, I just need that version because the other thing that I use needs that version. How long has Windows been auto-applying patches? It has the option to not. I don't yep. know. I don't use it. It turns on by default now. It ought, just auto-applies patches, right? And I, they do I it have without, it disabled to auto-apply. But it's it's different. It's different when you're talking about a desktop uh, operating system. It, it's you with the with the machine. Perhaps you have a bunch of things running locally that might give you a headache. But when you're talking about business systems and this thing, version 3.6, has a dependency on that thing versus version 4.7, whatever. You can't so just you gotta get So you got to get better at you got to get better at how you build software then. And how you manage dependencies and mm -hmm. your patch cycles and yeah, yeah. these and that and the it's other. It's much more closely to related to the design of your system, by the way. Yeah. It is a design problem. But but there are operational requirements that that you that may restrict the ability to push patches automatically. Okay, then you there, can't there sign my pledge. That, I'm, I'm making a new some pledge. places that will not push a patch until after they spent a month uh, uh, testing that, right? So at some point, we have to trust the people who are providing us with the software that their patch is not going to cause the whole, the whole enterprise to shut down. Yes, I grew up in the days when you applied a Microsoft patch too early. And everybody was locked out of their desktop or out of their laptop. I watched it happen multiple times. Okay. But I feel like we're past that now. We have to be past that now. Okay. But Chris, we also have we also have systems, you know, say in data centers where if you apply a patch to a to a database at even at two AM on a trade on a trading application, you know, you're gonna you're gonna stop after hours trades for billions of dollars in rent in let, let me put it like this. There is a very, very strong reason why we would never turn on the autopilot on a self-driving car. And I correlate that directly to the fact that, no, I will not be having automatic hands-off patching anytime <laughs> you soon. You know what you just told because, me? Because, no, I won't be trusting the people who wrote that thing. You know what you just told me? You haven't no. driven in a Tesla with autopilot in a while. And. And I, I use won't. it all the time. I use it all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I watch. <laughs> I watch. Freaking cool, man. It's it until, will blow until until you sit back and you start thinking. Wow, I know a lot of people who do QA. Wow, I know a lot of people who write software really, really, really well. I know a lot of people who don't. And no, no, that, that it, you're just asking for a level of trust that I am not equipped to give. Yeah, maybe this is generational. Maybe you guys are just too old to see this new way of thinking for me. Or as the new T-shirt says. I'm older than both of you guys. That's why I'm making it. ABTM. What's that? Always be threat modeling. Always be threat. Yeah. No, I mean, I can T-shirt okay. idea, ABTM. The fact is, no, I, I, you're asking for a level of trust here in things that we day-to-day -day see the dark side of. Well, the, the three of mean, us have seen enough enterprises that but what's, don't do what's that What's the alternative? Well. The alternative is we just keep doing the stupid things we've been doing for the last 30 years and things never get any better and they never get any different. If you can't build me a system that can and patch goals. on the fly, hold on now. Part of the problem here is we can't patch without rebooting often. You should be able to apply a software patch while a system is operating without having to do a reboot. Computer science is now. not that far. The Linux kernel got a lot of capability towards that. Yeah, but when I think about like Mac OS, Windows, kind of the, the, the enterprise-y de desktop operating systems, Ne neither one of them. I think they I think Mac OS maybe can do it in certain situations, but often they need a reboot for the whole thing. Yeah, like yeah. that seems like a failure in software design. design over the last number of decades. Like we should be yeah. able to patch something on the fly, so we don't have to reset the entire system to apply a patch. We should also have the ability to roll that patch back automatically if the system detects some fault state. So now we're building a better operating system to be able to automatically apply security patches. The problem is we haven't, we haven't moved anything forward behind the scenes. 
So I, I think that in a lot of the, uh, different domains, we have already gotten quite a lot of the, what you're describing. The things that doing it like that automatically will turn things more expensive, both in terms of development, testing, certification, and actually use, right? Sometimes you, I'm, I'm talking out of my behind here, but sometimes you have pieces of hardware that you have to physically go and initialize for them to get the result of a patch. Hold yep. on. Like, are you talking about something that's been made in the last five years? Or are you talking about things from 40 years ago? Matt, am I? we we'll talk about relatively recent things. Yes. This is how hardware, a lot of hardware See? devices work. Matt knows. Are we, are we talking about ICS, OT style in systems? Part, but not, in part, but not universally those. There are desktop, there are consumer grade devices that, that are probably in that boat as well. So they... That's, I mean, I've talked about this before. I'm just baffled that the market hasn't crushed certain failures in, in products to move forward. Classes because we of products. like cheap stuff. For the love of God, we are talking about taking away default passwords and you want people to, 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 to dynamically initialize and patch kernels. Seriously, are we in the same ballpark here? How how much RAM do you think these things, how much RAM do you think these things have? I mean, Add more RAM know, to come it. on. I knew, but I forgot. Problem. Yeah, because you don't have enough RAM. <laughs> Burn it in the ROM would be the answer. You add disk space, then you have virtual memory, then you don't need more RAM. Let's See, deal with is... the last one. Let's deal with this. We've been dealt with evidence of intrusion. Oh, the last yeah. one is, yeah, the last one is, well, boy, let's let's open that can of worms, shall we? Yeah. I figured it was time in Pandora's box so, here. So this one, so I have a really simple, I have a really simple idea on this one. Wait, this, wait, wait, read it first, read it first. Yeah, so, so. <laughs> And it's a, mouth, it's a mouthful, demonstrate a measurable increase in the ability for customers to gather evidence of cyber intrusions affecting the manufacturer's products. So let's break this down. A manufacturer product has to be able to know that it's being intruded, intrusion, that an intrusion is taking place or generating indicators of compromise that a customer can gather to know if it's if an intrusion has occurred. So, and, and the context is, so they added context to this one, um, specifically for this one, um, with some detail here. Now, mind you, they didn't, they didn't go into any more detail on the, on the goal, jump right into the context. It's essential that organizations have the ability to, to, to detect cybersecurity incidents. And so software manufacturers need to enable their customers by providing artifacts and capabilities to gather evidence, such as having audit logs. And so at the, at the very, at the, at the minimum, I'm so having, confused. having log generation, having log generation is a core foundation of design mm -hmm. that we've, we've talked about for decades. If you're not already logging WTF. But wait, the, it is essential that organizations have the ability to detect cyber. Who, whose organizations here? Is it the customer or is it the provider? It's for customers to gather evidence of intrusions. So, okay. So customer, let, let's take the example of a cloud provider. I'm a customer. What is being asked of the cloud provider to give me here? That your environment that you're operating in that cloud has had intrusions. So I need the logs for the VPC saying that nothing bad has happened and entered yeah. in there. Yeah, or the they EKS get or whatever you're using. Yeah. Areas so such as people are already, changes. socks out of the land are already overloaded with checking events for things that they actually wrote and are responsible for. Now we have to check the other side of the shared responsibility model as well. Yeah. well uh, it's, about, it's about transparency. It's about transparency. giving. It's logging. It's giving Locking you the running. ability, it's giving you the transparency to be able to detect an intrusion against a product without the manufacturer's but, help. But look, again, it, it, it's like the bomb. Yeah, let's create this thing. Who's going to consume it? Yeah. I mean, that's been my well, argument for the last two years. But I mean, if, if so, if a product isn't, again, if a product isn't generating logs, it needs to be generating logs. Just, it needs to happen. I'm more worried about, does the product need to have automatic detection of intrusions or do you, is it the customer who needs to make that determination? I don't In know. From, words, from what I read, everything that can today 
two detections also has some automated capability of figuring out what they are. There are LLMs galore doing that stuff for us. I have to keep doing whatever, right? Yeah. Goals. Did an LLM write this pledge? Oh. No, but the we, industry, we have a pledge Inquiry that an LLM wanted. did write. Yeah. No, we, we have the parallel pledge that the LLM did write. <laughs> uh, all right. So, Matt, what do we do with this? This last one. Like, what are we... <laughs> what is your take? Do you do you see value in this? Because Ezar's saying Ezar's kind of taking the negative side, playing my role from this whole conversation. I some I was defending this. I just realized, Matt, what's your take? <laughs> so so uh, plot twist. Uh, yeah, I I think if it was if it was all it was cracked up to be, there would be more signatories. But I hundred percent agree with you. The people who the companies who have already signed this are the leaders in these areas already. So if we're looking at the pledge signers to improve, I, I, I find it hard to know. I, I find it hard to understand how they improve much more from where they are. But the people who don't or are not signature, signatories to this, uh, the large swath of product, man, product manufacturers and suppliers of, of systems and devices that didn't sign it are really the target audience for this. And there's lots of room for improvement. I would say my concluding remarks here, I should have said this from the top. CISA is trying to do what they can to move our industry forward. Okay. Probably should have been nicer about it in the beginning. So people that hung up on this conversation. We, a like, lot beating earlier, on, we like beating on CISA. It's a, it's a love-hate relationship. It is. It is. But I mean, they are trying to move the industry forward. I get it. I get they're trying to do something. And so, is something better than nothing? Yes. Something is yes. almost always better than nothing. I just, my struggle has been, it seems like they could have gone so much further with this pledge. They could have made it simpler, but yet more hard hitting and have, have stronger teeth. Maybe they'll do that in the future. Maybe that's their goal. Uh, or more entertaining anybody, at the very yeah. least. Anybody at CISA, if you want a gamified pledge dashboard, let's chat. I think that could be kind of fun. But at the end of the day, CISA, keep doing what you're doing. Like keep trying to move the industry forward. Like that's not, my goal is not to try to squash okay. the movement of our industry i think you just need some you need some people that aren't just high-fiving you all the time to give you feedback on stuff you write like i personally i just think that apart from the reducing entire classes of vulnerability here the whole thing went to the goals i mean yeah that 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 stuff that you know if you aren't doing up to now seriously i i, I don't know what to tell you <laughs> but on a secure by design approach that the reducing entire classes of vulnerability, that's the one that to me means something. Still, is that measurable? Is that something that you can report? I don't know. And, and maybe, oh, CISA, maybe, maybe CISA trying to be a little bit close, you know, name this thing properly. If you're going to do a secure by design pledge, have a pledge that actually has secure by design items. Yes. I, I think that they were not trying to have this pledge be like the greatest, greatest of all time, or as people say, the gold, but, uh, 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 I think that they went for something that they can definitely reach out to and get people moving in a direction, as Chris said, right? And hey, positive change is, is positive. <laughs> so yeah, we stand behind it. Yeah. Even though we just spent 38 minutes Go. pinpointing a lot of flaws. We, oh, right. We no, just, it's it's not a big mountain to climb, right? You don't have to be, I don't know, a good to do it, but... <laughs> It's there. Oh man! There's a t-shirt in there somewhere. There is our yeah goat. <laughs> Picture it on the front, <laughs> with no other context. It's just gonna say goat. Goat. <laughs> oh, I don't know where else we could go at this point. I think we've reached the end of the over security over table. the cliff. We're, we're and, guard. Uh, we're, we lost well, the guardrails and we're off the cliff. We yeah. can always go to the barn. <laughs> Let's go to the barn and see if the cow is also nearby to the goat. All right, with that, I will end this conversation and uh, please listen again soon to another episode around the security table. But Cesar, we love you. <laughs>